evening and good morning wherever you are in the art world. So tonight we are welcoming once again um, Affinity Art Gallery from Lagos, Nigeria. And, um, and we will be speaking to Olu Arinozo, who is the director, and, uh, and uh, Nana Anderson. And through the wonderful curator, Moni Aisida, we will, um, you know, we will be guided through this wonderful exhibition, I Am and Nothing Else, which I adore the title. <laughs> and especially today, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful title. Um, really very, very inspiring. So we will, we, you know, we will, uh, this exhibition highlights healing, identity, community, uh, femininity and uh, wholeness. But especially as, uh, as uh, Nana was uh, mentioning before, it takes what it takes to exist in today's world as an African woman while playing homage to the, to the past generations. We will be um, talking to the five visionary female artists from Nigeria and South Africa. So we will have Donna Duke. Hello. Good. Uh, hello. <laughs> I can see you. Uh, Nene Malango. We, we, speak, we spoke before. Uh, Ruana Tella. Hello. And um, we have very, very difficult. So please bear with me. Bukaka Wuli Nobakada. <laughs> hello. And no, that, was, that was pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. And then Tomilola Olumide. Hello, everyone. Really welcome to the Art Talks. I to ask you because I know it is uh, it was uh, um, a teamwork, an incredible teamwork. It is a wonderful book uh, from a poet Clarissa Pincola Estes. Hey. Nana. Yes, for sure. Um, so the um, women who run with wolves archetype um, of a wild woman um, is definitely a book that stands out um, and. In a way, to you, you know, it definitely spoke spoke volumes in terms of you know when you think about the archetypes, especially with African women. Um, I myself having two sisters, my mom and some of my cousins, and all the archetypes and I guess like prejudices and ideas that are based around them, and really them not having the narrative to speak for themselves. So I guess like that was really the 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 background to to this exhibition where we really wanted to allow the women in fact to be honest they don't need permission to speak for themselves they already have permission to speak for themselves they're already free so it's just us giving them a platform to show themselves actually yeah the ladies in this exhibition was simply brilliant i can't say anything more um i wish i actually got to see it in person but um Olo and Moni have done a good job with sending me a lot of photos and a lot of video calls in the past few weeks. Um, but honestly, um, you know, the work, the work that was done and in celebration of Women's Month as well, you know, I feel like it just, it just transferred onto the canvas. You know, the energy, the energy is definitely in the works. We have some glimpses behind the scenes with uh, with all who can't wait. As I said, bringing me to this exhibition was um, the positive theme that it embraced. Um, one thing that the team, when they approached, I, I, I assume everybody, when they approached us, they really wanted to celebrate the essence of womanness, and that is something that I aligned with immediately. And also, they are a great group to work with. They made they made working and executing this so much easier, especially with everything going on on my end. I had a lot of projects, and working with them was just seamless. But I think the mood and the spirit of the exhibition is the thing that drew me into Affinity Gallery, and I I hope that's the same for all the other artists. Beautiful, beautiful, Nene. And we can't wait, you know, I am so uh, intrigued to, to say it's a beautiful space. We've been actually last year almost, a uh, couple of months ago, uh, with um, with all we, we, we went through another exhibition. It's so nice to come back in Lagos with all of you. Um, 
So with Olu, uh, tell, tell us a bit, you know, your concept as a, as a gallery is quite uh, fascinating because you are um, supporting emergent and also well-established artists. Yes. Um, well, good evening, everybody, and it's good to be back on here again. Um, well, um, the strategy for the gallery is um, representing emerging artists from Africa, both in Africa and in the diaspora. And we are more focused on the representation of women, which are the more underrepresented gender in the industry. So for this exhibition, we decided to celebrate International Women's Month with emerging artists who are come from Nigeria and from South Africa, three artists, Tomi, um, Tomi, Rwana, and Donado from Nigeria, Why? Kukukwali and Nene from South Africa. So in this exhibition, we are talking about I am and nothing else. So I'm going to show you guys around and introduce the artists one by one. So Rana, tell us in this body of work, she just started this series in which she's talking about resting. She creates an alternate reality by situa situating herself in dream screams, where she, she where she just wants to be, you know, in a in a form of rest because she feels like women are always told that they have to they have to struggle or they have to work too hard, and these days she's also talking making making an important important point of us resting as women in general. Um, it's a new series, the blue ones, that you can see on the screen right now. Um, yes. It's a new series titled Resting in Cerulean and Ultramarines, and that is in reference to the colors that you can see she's using. And in a minute, you'll see her old series, which shows like the how different and how diverse this new series is from the old one. The old, her, her old series, it's titled on them. To serenity, to peace, to rest. And you can see that immediately from the colors she chooses. The blues, the greens, the mint um, hues are all very calming and meant to um, kind of pass across that message of peace. And watch but as a right and as a form of and so she puts her figures in this dreamscape because technically and um, typically in dream, when you're in dreamland is when you're asleep and that's when you're resting. And for a lot of women, um, sometimes sleep is the only time when they're able to get rest. Um, in dreamscapes, it's where you have freedom to create and to be whoever you want to be. That's an additional layer to the works that she kind of views that freedom where in real life a lot of women might not have the freedom that they can achieve while they're asleep and while they're dreaming so that's and then she, if you notice um their embroidery around the edges of the of the canvases and so she puts further messaging using embroidery as a tool to pass across a message each message in like each artwork that she that she creates. So. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very nice to meet you. They, they, it's extraordinary what you created. Did it take uh, to to paint? Uh, both works took like two weeks all together to like make um, the embroidery and everything. What was the most uh, uh, inspiring moment while you know with this group uh, artist show that you can uh, recall okay so I said that um, I really liked how like the colors came out and how I could feel the the feeling of um, calmness and how I could feel the figure resting when I was done with both pieces like the color palette that I chose and how everything just came together at the end I 
think with with these particular works, um, I th- I think for it's like it feels like the first time that um, I felt like every I I felt like I had found a sort of signature for myself. I think because I've been going through art school all this time and I've just been like learning a bunch of different things. But like it was the first time I found a way of using material to to communicate it things weren't just technical anymore and i think that's what i appreciated especially about this exhibition and the title and the other artists that were um in communication with everything is this yeah i just i i just enjoyed conceptualizing all of it fantastic fantastic but Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, they look good. Nineteen works all to top. Yes, how many? Nineteen. Oh, nineteen. Yes. I was using different kinds of lace um, on paper and then acrylic paint on top of that. Um, that's for the works that like the blue um, coming of age series. And then in the other two, it's black paper that's been asymmetrically arranged. And then oh, it was mi- mixed media on top of that. I used white charcoal, I used white pastel, I used white crayon. Um, yeah, I, I also used jewelry as well for adornment in the artwork titled The Promise. Beautiful, beautiful. So what inspired you? Again, if you can it is a fabric drawing installation which has been made using Adira fabrics. Um, Adira fabrics sourced here, they're all um, fabrics from various markets in Lagos, um, Ubi, and Moshipo, mostly in Moshi. Um, and the concept behind Lamentations of Lips That Keep Moving is basically the portrayal of advocacy against the limitation, degradation, and misogynistic um, societal mentality um, that we have here in Nigeria um, against women and young girls. I'm trying to advocate against those things and speak about them in a very brazen and unapologetic, um, unapologetic way. I'm not mincing words, and I'm speaking about these various experiences that have been portrayed in this commentary that I've titled Things um, My Country Has Taught Me. Um, and I'm speaking about some of these experiences, some things that I've experienced, some things that are stories from loved ones, some things that are stories from media, some are from strangers who I've never met, but I've heard through someone, through someone, through someone. Um, they're stories that touch and they are a 27 list of these things that I feel should never be maladapted um, spaces of being um, a woman or having to like adapt into society, things that we've been taught to um, conform to, things that we have been conditioned to believe are, are optimum but really aren't. And um, that's really what the piece is about. But the structural element mental health I think now I just keep on talking like on the side view and um, if you see if you go into the center of the piece and follow it round the rim you would actually see moving lips that just keep on going I will try and if I can I share my screen 
snuggle beds and what I mean is it's basically a movement of talking lips, continuously speaking about these things that I've listed in the um, commentary titled Things My Country Has Taught Me. And it's um, caged within this frame that is sort of like, in my opinion, feels as though it's like a cage. And it is um, society in a sense sort of restricting things and your authentic self. The things that we have been conformed to believe are for us, our conditioning, social conditioning and this and that. So that's really what it's about. The color choice in this was really intuitive. Um, in my practice, I've played around with colors as a as an expression of my emotional states, but also I think as a joyful playground of just um, experimenting because that's really part of what I do in my practice. Experimental um, journeys of autobiographical um passages of personal histories and whatnot and while making this a little bit of background into it was um the fact that this is a fabric drawing and fabric drawing in my sculpture and installation practice really refers to the manipulation of fabrics and um and materials that are considered to be malleable and flexible and transferring emotions and memories into those materials into the surface onto the surfaces of them to create um a portrayal of memory portrayal of um experiences onto these fabrics so as i was making this as i was constructing it i began to think or reflect back onto um experiences related to the theme in my own life um, experiences of belittlement of degradation as a woman here and things that have just been unpleasant um experiences as silly as not really silly but silly as um driving in lagos and you know just doing the thing maybe you get a wrong turn or a right turn or whatnot and then um a driver who so happens to be a man it's happened several occasions um a driver who so happens to be a man drives in front of me and he's like now woman which is like yeah so woman of course she'll mess up of course she'll you know do that and this and that and it's just really ridiculous or i even spoke i've spoken about that i've spoken about an incident of um being in school and i think this is common for a lot of us um, and our teachers ask um, the boys why you're letting the girls get ahead of you as though we're not supposed to be brilliant as well as though we're not supposed to be um, as though we're not supposed to have some sort of intellect and be forthright in our ability to think and do well and achieve things so things like that and then more serious things to do with um, marriage or sexual abuse, education and this and that. So I'm speaking about these things and I'm trying as much as possible to be very unapologetically truthful about um, the experiences of different people. Some I've met, some I haven't met, but hopefully at the end of the day, my aim for this work was to start conversations internally within us, um, for us to ask ourselves questions on why these things happen and also on if we want them to continue happening and also think about our own internal biases towards ladies, young girls and for the young girls who see the work and read the text for them to think to themselves, this isn't what I want and I am going to live a very unapologetically free life and do it with so much joy and not let anything hold me back. So that's really what I'm projecting in this piece. Thank it's you. beautiful what you said because you know you shared something universal. You know, it's uh, not only it's. I think it's uh, belongs to all of us, and uh, it's very true. Unfortunately, we are in 2022. We already had, uh, uh, but unfortunately, we 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 experience what you what you said uh, every day. 
and I think um, it's it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing with us uh, this uh, this uh, amazing work of art. Thank you. So it's a uh, it's very touching. Thank you. Okay, so for me, what inspired this work was the crossover between December and January, um, especially New Year's Eve. For myself, it was a very personal time because um, <laughs> I was realizing that in 2022, I'm turning 30, right? And it made me think about um, all the feelings that women go through when when they age and regarding aging and how that can be uh that how that can be accompanied with feelings of dread and almost like feelings of exclusion because we live in a society that kind of expects us to be young forever and we live in a society that celebrates our youth other than when we are older you know and i know 30 is nothing right but for the first time in my life, I started thinking about how the process of getting older affects women in society and how the same standard is not held towards men. And even though I went into <laughs> mild depression <laughs> because of that, something that I asked myself, I was like, okay, so if this is our reality, then what am I going to do about it? And this piece especially was kind of like a the, co the cocktail of emotions that I went through during this mental revelation that I was having with myself, right? Like I was having thoughts that were saying, celebrate where you are in your life, but obviously the things that society has held in place about um, getting a year older, even 10 years older, you know, it can instill a bit of fear and it can make you want to fight with father time. And do ridiculous things to, you know, alter your appearance, especially in this world of social media. And especially as a millennial where the selfie is the ultimate form of expression and, you know, identification, you know, so those themes and those emotions, I put them into this piece and I tried to make it as imperfect as possible um, while also getting that message across because, yeah, it, it. I don't know if other people go through this, but it was for the first time I think I was realizing that I'm being an adult. <laughs> and I also love this piece, like um, it's titled Dead If I Do and Dead If I Don't, Damned If I Do or Damned If I Don't. Um, because, like I said, the standards that society holds against women, they, they're a little bit different. We are told to walk within the lines, you know, if we cross over these lines, then we are labelled derogatory or we are labelled, you know, misbehaving and you kind of have to carry that that title for the rest of your life. And um, it's just, we are held at different standards, but it's also kind of like the standards are not fair to you. So even if you walk in those lines, you are still going to fall into ridicule, whether, whether you do it or whether you don't, you are still kind of damned. And I just wanted to take like a provocative approach to this theme and this sentiment. And the reason why I use black in all of my work is because other than the fact that it's my race, <laughs> I kind of like what black signifies, like it's it's the color of the womb, you know, the color of new beginnings, the color of creation, and also kind of like the color of isolation. And I'd like to believe thought and where you are self-actualized. And with this body of work, even though it was a concoction of emotions, I wanted to take like a celebratory approach to these um, these dark feelings that we can have as women. And I just wanted to kind of like pierce through them and be victorious and not let them 
overtake me and overwhelm me. So yeah, to take a a, a steering role, like you know, a steering role in my life to say that yeah, even though this is the reality that we live in, I will still celebrate and I will still celebrate myself and um, I will still choose to have a positive outlook. <laughs> at the end of the day. And I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a incredible. You know, now you see we we were listening to you and then mm. when we saw the 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 paintings everything became uh, you know a reality. It's, You know, through your words, we it was actually beautiful, you know, that you introduced us before seeing your works. It was beautiful. Hola. It was Hola. beautiful. I, I I I can feel, you know, your you know, this this spiritual and divine and uh, mm. and and you know, as you said, we all go through 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 this. It's beautiful. And again, touching, very touching for sharing. Thank this. you. Bellissimo, very, very nice. Thank you so much. And I can feel, you know, all the sensuality. It's, it's beautiful, you know, even though it's so far away. <laughs> I see <it's> <laughs> they are fantastic. fantastic. Thank you so much. Very like, like a photo booth, you know. Yes. It's really great. You know, it's a, it's something that, you know, you would never think and uh, it's, it's really the gives us the, the glorifying women, uh, you know, in every day, in every second, you know, be beautiful, beautiful. I think, as I said last time, I didn't do an art talk on, on the 8th of March, <laughs> but because women have, should be celebrated every day. So mm -hmm. that's why we actually celebrating us <laughs> today <laughs> and not only on the month of, of the women, but uh, beautiful. This is also divine, beautiful. In everything, excepting yeah, yeah. your yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. It sounds ridiculous, but it's the reality of of being no, a woman. Think about it. It's not ridiculous at all. You know, I, I, I see myself every day, you know, and I didn't think when I was younger that it would affect me, but it does. So it's something that every day you look at your at the mirror and you're like, wow, okay. And especially yeah. when you have children telling you, mommy, you are getting older. I'm like, okay. Yeah. When somebody walks up to you and says, auntie, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we don't feel, yeah. we don't feel old. That's that's what, the beauty of it. It's that we don't feel old. We, we, yeah, we might look old with uh, some white hair. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's uh, that's life. Nice to have you here with us. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. So, Donna, you are in Houston. You 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 are from Houston in the sense you lived in Houston. I was born in Houston, grew up in Lagos, and then I moved to England around 14 and stayed until I was 21, and then moved back to Lagos for two years, and then I'm back here now. So what is the story behind your painting? Uh, so which painting are we starting with? Um, okay, this, um, this piece is entitled, oops, sorry. It's entitled Longing. And essentially it's like the piece that I wanted to most encapsulate myself. I think it's the piece that most signifies me other than another piece. Um, and just the state of where I am now, I just turned 24 and there's a sense of understanding where you are in the world, but at the same time knowing the forces that work against you, but because you're still so young and naive, you're able to almost forge through that and feel as though the impossible is possible. Um, 
but there's a there is fear behind that but there's that hope and longing for what is to come or what is possibly able to happen in your life as like the world is your oyster kind of mentality um and what i wanted to really express with this piece was particularly my background i come from a really christian family a really really religious my mother is really religious um and i'm not at the point of her prayer warrior kind of staunch belief system yet um but i have found it very interesting how throughout my life whenever i came across difficulties or there are any type of obstacles i would almost rely on her blind faithness like faith to get me through and i wouldn't understand why that brought me so much comfort um so in that and behind the piece i essentially wanted to pay homage to that so i was able to translate original like um biblical text to hebrew like the original form um and so behind this this is psalm 46:5 and it's basically god is in her midst um is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved and god shall help her um bright and early so that's essentially the backing so almost like my background everything i've learned throughout life the people who have raised me behind me as i go forward into the next chapter of my life um not completely aware i wanted to make sure the eyes were closed because honestly i don't really have an idea what i'm doing at this point in my life um i have a vague idea of what i want to do but the vision isn't entirely clear but i'm still extremely hopeful to what might be destined for me in the future so that's that's basically what this piece is about um and i wanted to be as close up and as vulnerable and, per- and personal as i could so it's almost uncomfortably close to the subject um because that's how i feel so like vulnerable open and almost laying myself bare in this this way and this type of my life it's entitled within um so as a woman i don't know there's this weird moment where it feels as though women just become when i don't know if i'm there yet i don't know exactly what that even looks like but i drew up a lot of inspiration around the women around me so it's my mother and my sisters and my sisters are just now mothers themselves and i've seen them completely change before my eyes my perception of them is completely different and there's this strength that comes out of nowhere cuz women are are in your family is usually their role is to be the therapist the problem solver you go to you go to them for all your emotional needs but i was wondering i was like where does that come from why is it that we are given this responsibility because i know right now in my life i'm not at that stage of taking on the burdens of the people around me as much as let's say a mother would um so i was thinking as like where does this strength come from where does this power come from and i the only word that i could think of was within and also still drawing around my background i wanted to almost feel as though it is an almost an omnipotent kind of energy that comes from your faith or what like what you have to do or the power that's placed within you So I tried to represent that as much as I could and I use gold leaf as much in most of my works actually um as a signal for black excellence strength vulnerability because I would like to always even though it's like a vulnerable work it might show a little bit of hardship for me women black people everyone essentially is innately golden within themselves like there's power in their struggle there's power in their stories um so i like to represent that as much as i can and and i have a large affinity towards the hand You know, I think there's something so beautiful about hands like the power of creation and the power of care all of that goes through the hands so for me that was the most apt way to depict 
a subject such as this? No, as I said, I could not see uh, the hands until you know until the close. But it is it is again a very powerful powerful you know and I and I love you know what you said about women about you know as a reference mother grandmothers. It is uh, it is very very touching and true. And it, I love this you know this composition. I love it. I usually focus on a little bit more of a hyper realistic approach to figures. Um, but I wanted to try and dial back because when I was creating this piece, I was going through a loss in the family and I almost felt so stripped down um, and almost bare and I didn't really know how to process anything. And I was thinking about what life is and how people see you once you leave the world and how you even make sense of that for yourself and your own identity as a woman and just as a person in general. So it's called processing because that was what I was doing at the time. And um, essentially it's line work, but I wanted to find a way of almost telling the story of how two people's perception of one person is never the same. So although it might look identical, um, face value, the lines are ever so slightly different. So what one idea one person has of you is not necessarily the same idea another person has of you. And I find that very true, especially in the context of women, because I feel as though we almost have to put on a, a face depending on the situation. Um, so that was essentially me trying to find a way to grapple with my own inability to actually know who I am and how other people see me and how I want to be seen in this world and how I want to put myself forward in this world. Um, um, and who is to say which is true and which is not. Um, so that was essentially that piece for me. And I wanted to encapsulate it in gold leaf. Um, same thing as a way of just saying that no matter what the occasion is, there is still some sort of specialty in that meaning of the unknown, whether it's a human or a situation. Um, and I don't know if you can, you can actually tell from the zoom, of course, but um, it's raised. So it's not, it's not flat on the, the piece. It's, uh, it's, it protrudes out of the canvas ever so slightly. But this was a very interesting thing and a very different avenue for me to undertake because I've never actually done work such as this. Um, so that was nice to as well challenge myself. So this piece is called The Seemingly Submissive Dreamer. And with my work, I try to come from a place of understanding and I never want to place judgment on another or say that there's a right or wrong way to live your experience in this world. So in this piece, I kind of ask the viewer to take the place of the submissive wife or the submissive woman. Um, and my my country is extremely religious in either in either way you want to look at it. So women have been asked to always take a step back um, and almost submit to their husbands in whichever way they want to, like whichever way the husband wants to go forth in their aspirations. Um, so essentially I wanted the, I did it, I, I, I placed the perspective of the husband almost as a way of a window towards faith. Um, there's a way like, I didn't want to, place judgment on older generations for the way in which they were taught to live their female experience. Um, I wanted to find a way into finding the beauty and the joy in whatever experience that they had because those are the generation that that raised us essentially. So the woman is essentially looking towards the heavens and even though the man is almost eating from his fruit and he's able to live out his dreams or live out whatever he must want to do. There's almost a calm in the way in which a woman could, like well, past generations, I was really looking towards like my mother and grandmother, past generations having faith that God is has laid the groundwork, has basically ordained the husband to go forth and do what 
he was supposed to do in his life. Um, and whether or not I agree with that notion, I don't personally think I'm there yet. I thought it was interesting how much belief and strength women had in that belief system and how it's very different to how we think now and how we process our emotions and how we see ourselves in this world. I to how women saw their role because I don't think it was from a place of oppression or that they were seen as less than but it was almost a different mentality towards their situation and their society at that time um, so that's essentially what this piece um, is um, evoking to me and I also wanted I also drew a lot of inspiration from Grecian artworks in terms of fluidity and landscaping and I almost wanted to make the man himself and his body feel more natural and almost like mountainous in the way it's almost we are trudging through and we are having to really like climb towards the next phase of life or the next generation almost so that was what this piece really signified for me. No, we, we are going to uh, soon I think you know we are opening the doors to a very, very interesting conversation. Bizi, would you like to, to, to come here or shall I read it for you? Um, of course, I think I'm relatively younger than I think the rest of the artists, but I have found myself feeling terrified of aging. But I think that's more so of the society that we're placed in and the expectations that are placed on us as women, because even though you're not at that age that all these commercials of anti-aging, all of this stuff are thrown at us, there's almost that imminent fear that you will get there. Um, so that's almost like an internal battle that you have to go through every day. Um, and I find that in terms of like our male counterparts and whether or not they're ready to accept us, I do think that the tide is changing, um, especially in my own experience. I've met incredible like female artists that are as welcomed. But of course, there's always a lot more room for improvement like in anything. And I think this is just the beginning of a new switch and of equality. And um, I think that Going forward, hopefully more women will feel empowered to show their talents. Um, and then I think through that, that's when we'll see proper change, not only from the ground level, but from a top-down level. So we will see, not yet achieved in a way. <laughs> I, I don't think we've achieved it in the fullest capacity, but I do think we have started and a huge change is coming. Yes. Yeah, and I think to add on to what she's saying, I think that um, exhibitions like this or projects like this are catalysts for that kind of change because I think the silence of women has often like served as like a cushion for all of these kind of um, all these ideas about us or the way that we're treated um, to prevail. And th this is a form of like breaking that silence, us having these conversations with each other, displaying these works um, to as many people as we are and uh, having these talks and publicizing all of these things, um, it starts to like reveal another perspective. And I think, yeah, we haven't reached the goal yet, but we're doing something. Yes, yes, of course. I think, you know, it's uh, exactly by, by uh, creating awareness, I think it's uh, it's extremely important. Um, but uh, thank you. Unfortunately, I think you know it's it's everywhere. It's not only you know in in um, it's also here and uh, everywhere else in the world we are going. If the um, experiences that uh, Tumlola mentioned, and um, I think Nene also said something along similar lines in terms of how women feel as they get older. I just wanted to ask whether this is something which is experienced or has been experienced by the current generations and are things likely to change with your peers, your male peers, in terms of how they treat women, how women feel around them, the way the world is with the younger men. 
who are your age group? That's what I wanted to ask. Thank you. A bit of a change, but I, I would like to hear uh, Olu or Nana. What do you think about this to this question? Can you add anything? <laughs> it's a difficult question. Um, um, you know, as we kind of put this exhibition together, it was really a humbling experience um, because, you know, for a lot of the time, what we don't understand is how like society really shapes the misogyny. In fact, it's not necessarily um, the fact that men, you know, younger men want to treat women in the way that they are treated in some way sometimes, but rather the fact that, you know, some men were not taught any better, right? And so you do better when you know better. And like all the ladies beautifully said, you know, using a platform like this, especially through art, because art has a really um, unique way of communicating that other mediums or channels doesn't really have. Where, for example, if you're being scorned or you're being told not to do this, then you might have like some rebellious attitude to it, like, or your ego might come in play and like, why are you telling me not to? You know, art doesn't really do that because it's so subtle. It has a very subtle way of like, you begin to understand, you know, the empathy really comes into play. And I think we do have a lot, long way to go um, we, in terms of like equality, just because of like the systems, like the way the system is broken down. It's like, you know, top heavy with the man and then the bottom half is, you know, the women and they have a role to play here. Um, but I think we're moving forward, you know, because the future, for example, the last two years that we've had um, with COVID and everything shutting down the world made us really, you know, rethink a lot of things we thought we knew, you know, um, and exhibitions like this really like help us understand, you know, the female perspective, what, you know, just reading the artist bios, the, the artist statements, understanding what women went through, what women have been going through, what women today are going through. You know, gives me a whole unique uh, respect level, you know, for 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 the woman. You know, like you guys are really amazing, and we are uh, Olo and I. You know, proudly like to call ourselves top feminists. You know, we're really for you guys. And I have sisters myself and my mom, and it really just makes me see them in a whole different way as well. <laughs> Thank you, Nana. Now, again, very well said. I think it's. Uh, uh, you know, we we've been uh, we, we women are um, and through the through the art. I think it's it's a it's a new it's a universal language. We can we can really explore uh, the beauty and the and all these emotions. You know that are coming through all these paintings and again everyday life, which is the most beautiful part of our you know of our experience and. Um, Beautiful. I appreciate this so much that I got to listen to the ladies and I think the work that Donna was saying actually got me a little bit emotional <laughs> for a moment there because I lost my brother earlier this week and I mean not this week this year and um, the work with the different perspectives just got me thinking about when we were doing his eulogy and how everybody loved him but we loved him differently and it was interesting because we selfishly thought, oh, we lost our David, but it was like everybody in the room lost a version of him. So even the textures, it was like, he became like a different layered person. So I thought that was really beautiful. Um, and I think <laughs> as a young black woman, Congolese, who is um, finding my way in this very um, kind of still misogynistic view of the world, but also there's a voice feminist voice coming through I found myself judging a lot of the ways my mom and my grandma used to do things like why would you stay why would you do this but <laughs> that's why I keep mentioning keep saying you're 24 and I'm like you have a lot of maturity that I only got now that I'm 26 <laughs> you know um, and I'm currently studying psychology I'm doing my masters and I think that I just found I found your work and the way you spoke about it beautiful because empathy is beautiful. To look at something and not judge it and to kind of paint it like that, which is, yeah, it was really beautiful. I'm um, telling me to keep quiet, so I'm gonna end it here. But um, yeah, thank you so much. I just appreciate this and I appreciate this platform. Thank you, Nana. Thank you, Olu. 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 Thank you,
Thank you. Thank you so much for those kind words, honestly. Thank you very much. It's a uh, divine. I think we are all, uh, uh, I am amazed, I'm a bit older than all of you. <laughs> now we're talking about age. And I think it's uh, the maturity that is coming through, you know, uh, is breathing through your works of art are exceptional. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's again, you know, it's all uh, the, the, the essential core, you know, of being a woman and accepting what my mother, my, you know, my grandmother uh, accepted. And you're like, it's very easy to question, you know, but it's one different thing when you are, you are living, uh, you know, and you're experiencing and you are a mother uh, or you're a sister or a daughter in in this you know everyday life it's it's a challenge i think and i think we're doing an amazing and extraordinary uh work but i have to remind myself every day so <laughs> you're not the only one but uh thank you thank you divin beautiful so now we we are maybe we would have another uh, question i could you tell us what you what you brought which is also very important um, well, I'm, I'm also Nigerian and um, I grew up uh, as the only son in my family. From, I, have, I have four sisters, an older sister and um, I had three younger sisters. And um, now I have two little boys, or oh, <laughs> little, little um, brothers. Um, they're about 10 years old. And, um, you know, like I, I always said that when I, when I have a child, I would like my first child to be a girl because um, I think for me it was important having a big sister growing up because um, you just you know you just you know as a boy as a young boy growing up you know having a big sister gives you a different perspective um, on just women because she, you know she kind of like was a you know protector for from for me in school and stuff so and I'm um, just you know to touch on what I was saying I think that uh I think that um you know while, while we're pushing for you know exposure for women and, and access and opportunity I think that you know it, it can be complete if it's not coming from the from from the from the other side as well because you know we need that um to also tell young boys that uh you know you don't have to be this like pillar um you know because you can play. You can play as you can play as a supporting role to, you know, the women in your life as well. You know, because um something that I've had to like struggle with a lot growing up was um, you know, in my culture, it's like being the first son means that you have to take over the family business and you have to do these things and what um, what um, whatever dreams you have, you have to like put that aside and face the family business because it's like you know that your that's your role. And it's funny because my 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 eldest sister plays that role a lot better. <laughs> you know, she she fits into that role very well. Whereas I'm more interested in filmmaking and in, in writing, and I want to do that. You know, so I think um, you know, I'd I'd wish that as as we tell women to do more, um, and you know, just as we encourage women to do more, and we can, you know, they get more access and opportunity to do more. I think it's also important to teach young boys that. You know, they don't have to, you know, be this, you know, this larger than life figure, you know. Um, and um, yeah, that's, I think that's just the point I was trying to make. I have two boys and they they are going crazy with me and my daughter. <laughs> I, I, I do understand your point, <laughs> but my, my two boys are, you know, they're sometimes like, they need some peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, it is true. It is true what you're saying. And I think, you know, it's, I think we, we should stop. The, the most beautiful thing would be to stop saying, I'm a woman, I'm, I'm a man. You know, we are everything. At the same time, we are amazing people. That's what we should do. We should not relate to the gender. But um, I think we are, it's, it's beautiful to, to talk about, you know, and the true art, you know, we, we see with Tommy Lola, we see with Donna, with Nene. And um, with Buka uh, Valley, sorry, I, I see this this amazing, amazing um, 
it's the witness of our reality. And uh, again, it was beautiful from, from Olu and Anna to put it together and, uh, and to bring this tradition, the, you know, the, the, what we're going through from uh, past, uh, present and future. I think it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. We, we mentioned before with Moni. Moni, would you like to add anything? Um, hi everyone. I think it's Hello. a great conversation. I'm so glad the artists were here to represent themselves and the beautiful works. I think they did a wonderful job. It's been such a pleasure working with them now for like weeks. And um, once everything came together, you brought so much joy. And I'm just really happy to see them, you know, talking about their works with so much grace um and knowledge you know and passing across that information to everyone and sharing as well i think there's so much power in sharing and i'm glad for this platform um, that you've created carolina so thank you as well and um about the exhibition i just wanted to say that i'm that i think one of my favorite different perspectives for artists um even though we're talking about womanhood and celebrating womanhood it's the each each perspective from each artist is so different, but it, it all works together and forms a cohesive language. Um, you know, and I'm so glad for like work from from Tom Lala, for example, that is, you know, very assertive. And as much as you know, we're being celebratory and um, all happy and kumbaya, Tom Lala's work is like calling people, society out and not not mincing words. You know, meanwhile. Um, artists like Rowana and and Donna and Nene, they they approach it from more nuanced, you know, levels and more nuanced conversations about, you know, things that are happening to them personally, but are also very relatable to everyone around the world, clearly by these conversations we've been having this evening. Um, so I'm just very thankful for the opportunity, thankful for the artists, you know, that were able to pull this off. And I can't wait to, you know, see what's next for them. If the artists could tell us briefly each of them what you know what's next for them that'd be amazing as well so people can follow along and look out for what you're doing next thank you Moni. i think you 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 said it very well so please who would like to start uh what's next um currently i'm working on a large body of work for black coffee for his ibiza um residency so I'm like the visual artist for his music talent. And yeah, I'm having sleepless nights. So that's what's next for me. <laughs> so what's next for me? I'm gonna take a cue from Anatella's paintings and black wall and rejuvenation. And I'm going to focus on creating more bodies of work in my practice. Um, but the audience can keep up with my practice and the journey I've been making by following my Instagram at Tomilola Mimipe Art and website as well, www.tomilolamimipeart.com. So that's what we're doing. If uh, Donna, what would, would be your, your next project? Um, so currently I'm finishing my master's at Central St. Martin. Um, mm -hmm. But I I have a exhibition up in summer, so I'm preparing for in London, and I have some commissions from some clients. So just getting work together, really. Um, I'm working towards a solo exhibition. So it's a larger body of work, um, building up from the coming of age series that is presented um, here, and I'm just finishing up my honors in fine art. So, yeah, fantastic. But I thank you all. And, you know, I, I would love, uh, please do share any of your beautiful uh, works of art through the Art Talks as we adore Olu uh, and Anna. We are a great supporter of, the, art, of uh, the Affinity Art Gallery. I think you've been doing an amazing, amazing uh, work with, with this exhibition. You know, there is such a... But what I see through all your painting works of art is such a maturity, and and uh, and it's it's really uh, extraordinary. I I loved it. Thank you so much for you know sharing this uh, these moments, and uh, thank you again for for you know for letting 
be uh, seeing a bit of a, a glimpse of your exhibition. Um, round of what everyone has said. Um, thank you, Carolina, for being on the platform, for allowing us to be on the platform again. And thank you to all the artists. Well, um, this is, I'm glad we could pull this off at the end of the day. And I'm glad everyone likes the works in the exhibition. And I want to congr congratulate the artists again on this beautiful body of work and and uh, through you know different parts of the world so again i thank you and i just the only thing that i can add is i am and nothing else amazing, amazing. thank you all for thank being you with thank you me. all thank you all Great. Great. Uh, my name is Ayer abdullah i'm a filmmaker from the states but um i just want to say i'm very inspired by all of y'all um, because for me, I am on a journey of just trying to be more connected to the African diaspora. Like I'm going to visit Africa for a year. I leave in June. So my brother sent me this forum and I was able to tap in and see just the different works. And I'm just like really, really, truly inspired. And uh, that's when I say thank y'all. And uh, women always been my number one inspiration. I feel like, so just to see our perspective on a deeper level, creatively, it's just very, very touching and inspiring. So like, hopefully one day I can meet y'all, like I'll be in Nigeria and Cape Town and stuff. So it will be cool to just see y'all work in person. And uh, yeah, thank you for this, for having this uh, event. For sure. I, I'm so glad you actually pointed that. And I think that's the last thing I wanted to say, Carolina, and just to the team at Affinity Art Gallery, to all the artists, to all of the people here, like, like Black, african greatness and like excellence is just amazing to see like we can actually come together and work together um like i said to you in basel when i first saw you i said Olu and i's biggest problem was you know seeing african art in museums and you know the idea that people had of african art and we just really wanted to change that narrative because we knew what the talent was back home like there's just like so much talent so much creativity it's like brewing everywhere so it's just amazing mm -hmm. for like, you know, a, a small group of people to really come together and put this on. Just imagine what can happen if we all really came together and like, you know, really witnessed our power. So it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to all the artists. Yeah, congratulations. congratulations. Yes, I thank you. I think, you know, you, you said something very, very important. And uh, we, as I said, we will be our, your greatest supporters. So, you know, just, Thank you. Thank you for sharing this this incredible work. So as I said, it's a it's a window, it's into into the soul. So thank you. Thank you.